Joining us now, uh, Kroger CFO Mike Schlotman. He's a member of the CNBC Global CFO Council. Mike, you, you're saying for 2018, two to two and a half percent for same store sales. Is that what, is that what your forecast was uh, at the beginning of the year? And is that at 1.6, is that a disappointment that explains why the stock is down 8%? Well, I, I guess obviously the street is looking at the 1.6 as a disappointment relative to the two to two and a half percent guidance. That is exactly the same guidance we gave back in March when we gave our annual guidance. We were at 1.8 percent in the first quarter, which was a 16-week quarter. 1.6 this quarter, which is a 12-week quarter. Uh, so we're 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 within uh, shouting distance of that two to two and a half percent. We told Wall Street back in June uh, when we announced first quarter earnings that this was going to be a quarter where we had a lot of headwinds because we had just made significant price investments in our fourth period of the year. That was going to be a headwind in the second quarter as that cycled through and, and units in those categories increased, as well as a process we're going through a remodel process with 600 stores this year. And we expect at the peak of that headwind as the stores are disrupted and it naturally lowers sales a little bit when there's less product and disruption in the store, that that peaked in the second quarter as well. And as we go throughout the year, both of those are going to dissipate to some extent. And in fact, we, you know, the, from a space optimization standpoint, we expect that to become a tailwind late here in the third quarter and into the fourth quarter. So we're laser focused on being in that two to two and a half percent range. And uh, we're actually happy with the trends of our business. Uh, we announced restock Kroger last October, and uh, we're off to a great start, two quarters into a three-year plan uh, that's going to deliver $400 million of operating profit increase and $6.5 billion of free cash flow. So we're, we're, we're really happy with where the business sits today, and we're, we're poised to have a, a great second half. So is it, is it the price? Did you raise prices to, to the point where... Um, the, the same store sales was was it units that were down? I, I, the, the reason I don't understand is the, the consumer seems so strong. At least the, the, the time seemed to you know people seem to be flush. A lot of retailers are doing well because the consumer seems to be in such good shape. What caused uh, the? You're saying that the remodeling of 600 stores that that disrupted people coming into the stores to, to the tune of, of missing it, but from uh, at 1.6 versus 1.9. Well, the, the, the remodel certainly happens. We did well, not raise prices. We actually lowered prices. We lowered prices. So that, and, that, and that becomes a headwind as the units pick up. Because if you raise, it goes somewhere else maybe, I guess, too. And that well, can it, 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 actually, in the short run, when you raise prices, the customer doesn't notice necessarily in the short run, and it would have the effect of increasing okay. sales in the short run. But over the long run, that is not a good strategy to have. Because then it can hurt um, it over we're, the long you know, run. We're, we're, as I said, we're thrilled with where we're poised. Uh, to deliver an ID sales in the back half of the year. Uh, we, we, know, we know what we have to do to get there. There's a lot of work being done to, de to deliver on the 2 to 2.5%. And as I said a minute ago, we're laser focused on being able to deliver that. Mike, a, a friend of ours, Jeff Mackey, tweeted out something a, a few minutes ago, breaking news on Kroger. It's still a grocery store, stock off 10%. He said it tongue-in-cheek, but it really gets at the heart of the matter. People are not sure what to think of the traditional grocery stores as you have competition coming from Walmart and Target, Amazon with Whole Foods, and, and even new upstarts like a Fresh Direct or a service that, that delivers directly to home. Uh, what, what, what do you do about all of those issues, particularly when you're in a low-margin business? Well, we are still a grocery store, and, and we, we feed between 9.5 and, and 10 million customers every day come into our store. So while we may be a grocery store, we're a grocery store with an immense loyal following of customers. And when you think about having 9.5 million to 10 million customers come into your stores each and every day, we have a huge base of loyal customers who visits, visit us on a very regular basis. You know, relative to the, uh, Joe's earlier comment on the economy and things like that, we do sell food. Food is typically not as prone to increases in sales when the economy is strong. People are spending it on non-food items, primarily which some of those competitors you mentioned sell significantly more of that product uh, than we do, and we don't enjoy that tailwind in this kind of, of an environment. But our sales, we're, we're happy with our unit growth. We're happy with where market share is. We're happy with the trend of our loyal households, all of which continue to grow. You know, 20 of our, div our operating divisions had positive identical food store sales uh, in, the, in the second quarter, and only uh, a handful had uh, negative, and some of those were the ones most disrupted by some of the activities I talked about. So we feel great about where we're heading into the back half of the year. Okay, Mike. Uh, Mike Schlotman, thank you. We appreciate CFO for, uh, for Kroger.